WhatsApp is a convenient tool for work. Most people have got it on their phones already. They're familiar with it and it's free to use. So what's the problem with it? Why shouldn't we be using it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you why all of those things make it the problem. Hello, my name is Jennifer. I'm the founder of Silk Helix and we help small businesses with all things HR, people management and employment law. So the biggest problem with WhatsApp is exactly as I've just described it, people are familiar with using it, they're using it all the time, they're using it for personal use. This means that when we put a work group into our personal WhatsApp, we're unable to switch off. Yes, we can turn off notifications for a particular group, but when we go into WhatsApp, we still get these little blue numbers which tell us that there are messages within that group. So that then takes quite a lot of personal willpower and boundaries to be saying, I'm not gonna look at that because I'm not working, I'm switched off from work. And that is what we're seeing is creating the biggest problems when it comes to WhatsApp. People saying that they can't switch off, they're getting these messages, they're getting them when they're not working, when they don't want to be thinking about work, when their head's in something else, and rightly so because they're on their downtime. This could be their holiday, their weekend, their evening, whatever it is. These messages are coming in at times that are not appropriate to what somebody wants in terms of their work-life balance. Following on from that, we're also seeing then the exchange of personal mobile numbers being used inappropriately. So as soon as you put somebody into a team WhatsApp group, you are sharing their mobile number with everybody else in that group. So one of the things that we are coming across is that people are then using that mobile number to contact somebody outside of the group, contact them individually on WhatsApp. Now, yes, we all make friendships at work, perfectly acceptable to share your number, to be talking on WhatsApp or wherever else you wanna to talk to, to your friends. But you should be in control of who gets your mobile phone number. You should be in control of who can use that to contact you, particularly outside of work. For some people, they want that boundary of saying, these are my work colleagues, I see them, I talk to them, I communicate with them at work. These are my friendships outside of work and they are two separate things and I want to keep them separate. It's also potentially a data breach. If somebody's mobile number is being given out and they haven't given permission for that, then that's potentially going to be a data breach. Which leads me on to data breaches in general. There is a requirement on organizations when it comes to personal data to be compliant with the general data protection regulations, which means that organizations need to know what data is being held, where it's being held, where it's being shared. And unfortunately, with WhatsApp groups, we can lose control of that very easily. It's very easy for somebody else to be added into that. We're seeing customers getting added in, suppliers getting added into WhatsApp groups, which means that data is being shared where it shouldn't be. It can also cause problems with subject access requests where information within WhatsApp groups may become disclosable if somebody puts in a subject access request. So we may need to share that information, which means we need to know where the information is and we need to know who's sharing it. The same applies albeit not covered by GDPR, but to company data. So if you're sharing company data on WhatsApp groups, you're losing control of that data. As soon as you put information into a WhatsApp group, it's stored on the individual phones or devices of people who are reading those messages. That means that you cannot revoke access to that information. It is on their device forever. You can remove somebody from a group, which means that they will no longer see any future messages, but existing messages are on their device. That means that you have lost control of that information. You've lost where it's gone to. And if they leave, they've still got that information on their device. So your company information is there available for them to share it, show it to whoever they want. On the flip side to information being still on someone's phone if they are no longer part of the group. When you bring a new person into the group, they don't get to see any history. So if you're using WhatsApp as a channel for communicating key business information, and you've got somebody new into the business, they're not gonna necessarily know or be able to see 
the decision that was made last week, the week before, that might affect them and they need to know about it. So you're going to have to take active steps to make sure that anything that was previously disgusting that group can now be shared with them. Which means whilst other methods of instant messaging, so Slack, for example, which allows people to see that history creates a written first, it creates a documented approach to work. WhatsApp effectively has an approach of a live conversation. So there's no real difference between standing up in the middle of a room and telling a team something as it is to put in on a WhatsApp chat because only the people that are in that group at that particular time will see that message. Whereas if you put it on a Slack channel, then add somebody new into that because it's work, it's seen as something that somebody should be joining in and being able to see the history on. And therefore we can add somebody into the conversation because we realize that this conversation either needs that person in or because they're new to the business and they get to see the history. We don't get that with WhatsApp groups. So we have to be aware that somebody new to the business or new to the conversation won't have the history and the context that other people in the group are getting. So key issues with WhatsApp there are lack of boundaries in terms of work-life balance, being able to switch off from work and be in personal mode. WhatsApp just removes that. It blurs boundaries in terms of people using mobile phone numbers to contact individuals on an individual basis that people may not want. It puts your company data on somebody else's device, usually their private device, which means you've lost control of that data. And the same thing applies with personal data that's shared on WhatsApp, and that's going to cause you issues with GDPR compliance. So what are the alternatives? Well, I've mentioned Slack as one of them. There are others, Teams, Google Chat, what these enable people to do is to decide whether or not they're going to put the app on their personal phone or whether they use it just on laptops for work, for example. They can also turn notifications off in such a way that they don't even go into the app when they're not at work because it's purely work related. And therefore, they've got that boundary. You've got this clear definition between work and personal. And of course, you're not sharing people's mobile phone numbers to be able to give them access to that app. Now it might be slightly different if you've got work phones and people can turn off their phones and they're using work mobile phone numbers, but there may also still be problems with WhatsApp's terms and conditions. So I'll be checking them out carefully before you're putting it onto people's work phones. For regular tips on managing your team better and compliance with employment law, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. And if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below and I will answer them and may even form the basis of another video.